Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 7, Lesson 16. This will be the first lesson in a series on the quadratic formula. This method, while it may look complicated originally, is probably my favorite method to use when solving quadratic equations. And that's because it will work for every quadratic equation. So, the only vocabulary term we have is quadratic formula. And this quadratic formula is something you are going to want to remember. We're going to use it over and over again on these practice problems, and you'll want to be able to use it on your test. The formula is that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. This gives the solutions of the quadratic equation in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 where a is not 0 because if it was then x squared would go to 0, and it would no longer be a quadratic term. If you have any questions about this formula, please ask now so that you understand what we're talking about when we start doing these practice problems. The first practice problem we have says for each equation identify the values of a, b, and c that you would substitute into the quadratic formula to solve the equation. So what I want to do here is we will go letter by letter on all five of these equations. A is always the coefficient in front of the x squared term. So in number one, that would be three. In number two, that would be two. In number three, that would be negative nine. In number four, since we don't see a coefficient, it is understood to be one. And in number five, since we only see a negative, it is understood to be negative one. The next letter is B, and B is always the coefficient in front of the X term. This is your linear coefficient. So in number one, that would be positive eight. In number two, that would be negative five. In number three, that would be 13. In number four, since we don't see a coefficient, it is understood to be one. And in number five, it is 16. And the last letter we're going to find is C. This is the constant or the number only portion. So in number one, that would be four. In number two, that would be two. In number three, that would be negative one. In number four, that would be negative 11. And in number five, that would be 64. So your A, 
is always the coefficient with x squared. Your b is always the coefficient with x. And c is always the constant, the number only portion. If you have any questions about how to identify A, B, and C, please ask for clarification before we move on to the next practice problems. You need to understand this before you understand anything else we're doing. On our next practice problem, we're going to get our first experience using the quadratic formula. So that we have a template to go on, I'm going to write the quadratic formula here. It is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's going to give us the x-intercepts. So on number 1, we have an a of 1, a b of 9, and a c of 20. So this would be negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 9 squared minus 4 times 1 times 20. And all of this over 2 times 1. So now this becomes negative 9 plus or minus the square root. We have 9 squared which is 81 and then we have negative 4 times 1 which is negative 4 times 20 which is negative 80. all of that over 2. And then this becomes negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Which is negative 9 plus or minus 1 over 2. So we're going to have two different options here. First option is that x equals negative 9 plus 1 divided by 2, which is negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. And that's what they wanted us to prove here. The other option is that x equals negative 9 minus 1 over 2, which would be negative 10 divided by 2, which equals negative 5. And that's the other answer they wanted us to prove. Number 2. a is 1, b is negative 10, and c is 21. So this becomes negative, negative 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 21. All of that 
over 2 times 1. So this becomes 10 because negative negative 10 is positive 10 plus or minus the square root negative 10 squared is 100 negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 21 is negative 84 and 2 times 1 is 2 this becomes 10 plus or minus the square root of 16 because 100 minus 84 is 16 over 2. So we have the square root of 16 is 4 and we divide that by 2. Well, all of these are divisible by 2. So we can go ahead and simplify this to x equals 5 plus or minus 2. So we have two options. Either x is 5 plus 2, which equals 7, and that's the second answer they wanted us to prove, or x equals 5 minus 2, which is 3, and that's the first answer they wanted us to prove. And the last one is number 3. a is 3, b is negative 5, and c is 1. So this would be negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1. All of that over 2 times 3. So negative negative 5 becomes 5 plus or minus the square root negative 5 squared is 25 and negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 times 1 is negative 12. All of that over 6. So this becomes 5 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6. And this is the answer they wanted us to prove. All we have to do is split this apart. We're going to put the 5 sixths and then plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6. If you have any questions about how to use this quadratic formula, please ask for clarification because the next several lessons are going to be about the quadratic formula. And our last practice problem for lesson 16 is again just identifying A, B, and C so that we know how to substitute them in to the quadratic formula. On number 1, A is going to be 1, B is going to be 9 and C is going to be 18. Number 2 A 
is 4. B is negative 3. And C is 11. Number 3. A is 5. Remember that it goes with the x squared. It doesn't matter what order it's in. B is negative 1. It goes with the x no matter what order it's in. And C is 81. It's always the constant. Number four, before we can do anything, we must set it equal to zero. So we are going to rewrite four as four over five x squared plus three x minus one third equals zero. Now, we can say that a is 4 over 5, b equals positive 3, and c equals negative 1 third. Number 5, I'm going to rewrite it so that it equals zero. So we're going to have x squared minus 121 equals zero. Now, a equals one, b equals zero because you don't have an x term, and c equals negative 121. And the last one, number six, again, you have to rewrite it so that it equals zero. So this is going to be 14x squared plus 7x minus 42 equals 0. a equals 14. b equals 7. And c equals negative 42. So now this time they tried to make it a little bit tougher. The first three started out set equal to zero. But four, five, and six, you needed to understand that you must set the standard form equal to zero first before you can identify A, B, and C. And number three tried to trick you by putting it in reverse order. Remember that it is not the order that matters. A will always be with x squared. B will always be with x. And C will always be the constant that is by itself. If you have any questions about anything we've done on Lesson 16, please ask for clarification before we move on to Lesson 17.